What is going on everyone? This is Eric coming at you from just outside of Hartford, Connecticut. And today we're going to discuss the life and playing career of one of baseball's greatest players of all time, Babe Ruth. Now this is going to be one of the longer player bios just because there's so much to talk about with the legend. And I didn't want to miss any of the major stories. I didn't want to miss any of the major details. So without further ado, let's jump right in and start to discussing the career of Babe Ruth. So George Herman Ruth was born on February 6th, 1895 in Baltimore, Maryland. Now, as a kid, Ruth didn't see his father too much. His father worked multiple jobs, and this obviously kept him very busy. One of said jobs that he did is he ran a saloon. As a result of his busy schedule, George's father was really not a big disciplinarian, so George was able to get away with a lot. And he became troublesome as a kid. In June of 1902, Ruth was sent to St. Mary's Industrial School for Boys. Now, this place would serve as an orphanage and a reformatory. So, later on in his life, Ruth did admit that he would rarely attend school, ran the streets, and he drank beer. He was able to get the beer as his father ran a saloon, so he would be like, Hey, Dad, I want to go to work with you. See what, it, see what it's like. And he would just steal some bottles of beer. So, basically, going to St. Mary's was George's last chance to succeed. There are some questions as to why Ruth ended up playing baseball, but one of the most accepted answers is that St. Mary's athletic director told Ruth to play baseball, seeing as he was a bigger kid. Despite being left-handed, Ruth played three positions, catcher, third base, and shortstop. It is rare even today to see a, a catcher that is left-handed. So it was especially crazy back in the day, and he had to wear a right-hander's glove, so it wasn't the best fit for him. Now, one of the people who Ruth looked up to while at St. Mary's was Brother Matthias. Now, Brother Matthias would serve as a mentor to Ruth for the rest of his life. In fact, Ruth looked up to him so much that he modeled both his running and hitting styles after Brother Matthias. It was Brother Matthias who had Ruth pitch. The story goes that one day, Ruth was on the side of the field laughing at his fellow students as they struggled to pitch. As a result, Brother Matthias told Ruth to go out there and pitch and see if he could do any better. Ruth did, and he quickly proved to be the best pitcher at St. Mary's. Ruth quickly became a fan favorite, and by the time he turned 18, he was allowed to play on teams from the local area on the weekends. In early 1914, Ruth signed a, minor, a deal with the minor league Baltimore Orioles, not affiliated with today's Baltimore Orioles. Now, he was recruited by their owner, Jack Dunn. Ruth was supposed to remain at St. Mary's until he turned 21, but he was discharged at the age of 19 in order to pursue a baseball career. Right off the bat, Ruth was hazed by his teammates. They called him Dunny's Babe, which is how he got the nickname of Babe. Now, they called him Dunny's Babe because Jack Dunn clearly liked him. He liked what he saw. He gave him a big bonus. So, now during the 1914 season, Ruth played relatively well. He proved to be effective as both a pitcher and a batter. Now, unfortunately, in 1914, Jack Dunn was experiencing some financial difficulties, and he was faced with a tough question. Could he afford to keep Babe Ruth around? He unfortunately decided that he could not and that he needed the money. So Ruth was first offered to the Athletics, whose owner, Connie Mack, was good friends with Jack Dunn. Unfortunately, Connie Mack had to decline the offer of getting Babe Ruth, citing his own monetary issues. Now, at this point, Jack Dunn made Ruth known that he was available to everyone, and three teams were interested. The Cincinnati Reds, the Boston Red Sox, and the New York Giants. On July 4th, 1914, Ruth's contract was sold to the Boston Red Sox. The amount that is that was paid is unknown, but it ranges from $11,500, which was essentially he got $8,500 and was a $3,000 loan that he had owed the Red Sox owners was canceled, all the way up to $25,000. So upon his arrival in Boston, Ruth was given a pair of starts. While well, he won the first game, he lost the second. Back in the day, that was actually a red flag, and Boston decided that they didn't want to use him too much as they were in the middle of a pennant race. So Boston, they didn't use him as a hitter in 1914 that much, period. They viewed him as just a pitcher. So despite the lack of playing time, Ruth, he did get a raise when he was promoted to Boston. This coupled with the fact that as a kid, he didn't really have any disciplinary actions. He went from being able to do what he wanted to having strict guidelines, strict rules. He couldn't do anything. This led to him acquiring a taste of fine foods, liquor, and woman. 
So Ruth, he also started to display an attitude. He insisted on batting during batting practice, even though he was listed as only a pitcher. This behavior was seen as unacceptable for a rookie, as many players in the league wanted rookies to be seen but not heard. His teammates would be very, would always be upset with him, and they would actually cut his bats in half, and they nicknamed him the Big Baboon. Ruth resented that nickname. Nevertheless, he was sent to the minors, and the minor league team, the Providence Grays, was good, but they felt that, you know, hey, if we get Babe Ruth here, we should be able to do good. Ruth helped Providence win the minor league pennant. And come 1915, Ruth was given another chance. This time, he was proved that he was here to stay in the majors. He pitched to an 18-8 and record while providing four homers as a batter. Boston would go on to win the 1915 World Series, but Ruth would only make a single appearance as a pinch hitter in said World Series. He unfortunately grounded out for that at bat. So, at this point, Ruth was gaining attention as a player across the league who could hit long home runs. He didn't have the speed of like a Ty Cobb where he could hit a, you know, an outfield home run, but Ruth had the power that he could hit it just out of the park. So, 1916 saw Ruth step up as a pitcher, but not get too many chances as a batter. As a pitcher, he went 23-12 and with a career-best 1.75 earned run average, as well as pitching nine shutouts. He added three homers as a batter. More importantly, he proved that he was more than capable as a pitcher, as he outdueled the great Walter Johnson four times that season. Boston won the AL pennant in 1916, and this time, Ruth was given chances to play in the World Series. He pitched a 14-inning complete game gem for Boston in Game 2 that saw Boston emerge victorious 2-1. Boston once more won the World Series, giving Ruth another ring. Ruth had another strong year as a pitcher in 1917, going 24-13 with a 2.01 earned run average, as well as pitching 35 complete games. He added a pair of homers as a hitter. Now, a notable incident occurred for Ruth on July 20, June 23rd of that year, when Ruth walked the first batter he faced on four pitches. Ruth was not happy with the umpire, and he engaged in a shouting match with him. As a result, Ruth was tossed, and he decided to throw a punch at the umpire. This would lead to a 10-game suspension. More importantly, though, the man who went on to replace Ruth, Ernie Shore, would go on to retire the, the 26 batters he faced. The one that Ruth walked was caught stealing. Now, this is one of the more controversial moments in baseball history, as it is recorded as a combined no-hitter, but many people feel that Ernie Shore should get credit for a perfect game. It was originally credited as a perfect game for Shore, but they recredited it as a combined no-no. So, yeah. So, um, this, this, like I said, was controversial. Now, when the 1918 season began, Ruth was unhappy with his role as a pitcher who would pitch only every four or five days. He wanted to pitch more. He wanted to play more. So he wanted to bat during his off days. Originally, his manager was reluctant, but he realized that Ruth's bat could help to replace some of the firepower that the Red Sox had lost to the draft for World War I. So Ruth was given semi-regular playing time in the outfield and at first base. The results? Well... Ruth hit well enough to make it that his permanent role. He was still used as a pitcher, but not a full-time pitcher. He recorded a 13-7 record with a 2.22 run run average. His offensive numbers were solid. He tied the league lead with 11 homers, and he had a 300 batting average. He also led the league in strikeouts, though, with 58. It's worth noting that from 1918 until 1931, Ruth led the league in, sh in slugging percentage and... OPS, which is on base and slugging percentage, each year excluding 1925. Now, back to 1918, the Red Sox would go on to win the AL pennant once more, and they would meet the Chicago Cubs in the World Series. Boston would defeat Chicago in that World Series, which gave Ruth his third ring in four years. Ruth recorded a single hit, a triple, across five at-bats in the World Series. He also pitched in two games, both of which Boston would win. Including the 1916 World Series, Ruth had pitched 29 and two-thirds consecutive shutout innings in the World Series. 
that would remain a record until the day he died. And Ruth himself said that this was the record that he was most proud of. Yes, even more than any of his offensive records. Ruth was just so proud of that record. He loved it. Unfortunately, it has been broken since he passed away, but he went to his deathbed knowing that he owned that record. Now, the 1919 season saw Ruth start as both a pitcher and a hitter. But after Boston fell out of contention early on in the season, Ruth was allowed to focus on his offense. This would be the last season Ruth contributed much as a pitcher. Now, this helped lead to an offensive explosion from Ruth. He would smash 16 homers, which tied the AL single-season record by late July. In early September, he tied the MLB record with 25. However, it was discovered that another ball player named, named Ned Williamson had hit 27 home runs in the 1884 season for the Chicago White Stockings, albeit in a park with a right field fence of 215 feet. Ruth managed to break that record on September 24th, and he added one more home run for good measures a few games later. He finished the 1919 season with 29 home runs, which set a major league record. He also led the league in runs and RBIs while hitting a very respectable 322. On December 26, 1919, the Red Sox surprised the sporting world when they decided to sell the contract of Babe Ruth to the New York Yankees for $100,000, which is approximately $1.57 million today. Now, why did the Red Sox owner need that cash? We may never know. The rumor of him needing that money to fund a Broadway play has been discredited. As said play people mentioned was not on tour until 1925. It is believed that Ruth threatened to sit out if his salary was not increased, and it is thought that the owner owed money to the previous Boston owners when he bought the team. Nevertheless, Ruth was now a member of the New York Yankees. As a Yankee, Ruth would begin to focus solely as a hitter, as he only made five pitching appearances for the team. The 1920 season started off slowly for Ruth, but he quickly turned it around in May when he hit 11 home runs. His homer on May 1st was hit out of the old polo grounds. He then hit 13 more home runs in the month of June. By the end of the season, it was clear that Ruth was a star. He had shattered the record for home runs in a single season with 54. Fans also flocked to see Ruth and the Yankees play wherever they would play. The Yankees drew 1.2 million fans to their home games, and if the capacity were higher, the number would have been much higher as well. There were always fans outside wishing that they could have gone to the game. This was the first time a team had attracted over a million fans in a season. Ruth also led the league in runs, RBIs, and walks that year. In 1921, Ruth passed Roger Connor for most home runs in a career with 138 which is remarkable seeing as Ruth was only 25 at that time. Ruth once more shadowed the single season home run record with 59. Once more, he also led the league in runs, walks, and RBIs. Now the Yankees managed to win the American League pennant, but they fell in the World Series to their crosstown rival New York Giants five games to three. After the 1921 season, Ruth and a couple of teammates went on a barnstorming run across the country. Now barnstorming was basically when you would get together with a couple of your buddies that were major league players. You would go around, you would play against other, you know, built up teams. You could hypothetically play against a team that was myself and my friends back then. Now, a rule was in place to prohibit this from happening, seeing as the Yankees had taken part in the World Series. And new commissioner Kennesaw Mountain Landis was not happy that Ruth went out and openly defied him like this. He suspended the group and fined them. Ruth was able to return on May 20th, 1922. Despite this suspension, Ruth inked a three-year extension worth over $52,000 a year, which is about $820,000 today. So this accounted for 40% of the Yankees' payroll and showed how much of a star that Ruth was. His return in 1922 was sluggish, and he actually stormed the stands to confront a heckler at this point. He was once more suspended and fined for this action. He appeared in 110 games in the 1922 season, but he still hit 35 homers. Ruth and the Yankees once more won the AL pennant and faced off with their crosstown New York Giants for the second consecutive year. This time, the Yankees got swept four games to zero. Game two, however, was called due to darkness, and this would become a infamous moment where Kennesaw Mountain Landis would step in and basically change the World Series. Start times, he would push them forward to make sure that this would never happen again. Now, unfortunately, Ruth did struggle in the 1922 World Series. 
After the Giants manager, Tim McGraw instructed his pitchers to only throw curveballs to Ruth. During the offseason, Ruth promised to reform himself, and he did. He arrived at camp in 1923 in the best shape of his playing career. On, no on April 18, 1923, the Yankees' new stadium, Yankee Stadium, opened for its first game action. Ruth hit the first home run in said ballpark, leading to the stadium being dubbed the house that Ruth built. The 1923 Yankees ran away with the AL pennant, led by Ruth's league-leading 41 homers and career-high 170 walks. For this, Ruth was named MVP of the league. For the third year in a row, the Yankees met with the Giants in the World Series. This time, Ruth's bat did show up. He hit three home runs, scored eight runs, and the Yankees won their first ever World Series four games to two. 1924 saw the Yankees get hampered by injuries, but Ruth still had a strong individual year as he would win his only AL batting title, where he, as he would hit 378. He also added 46 homers. 1925, however, was a lost season for Ruth. He dealt with an unknown illness throughout the season and was hospitalized for roughly six weeks. To this day, we do not know what the illness was, but many speculate that in, it involved alcoholism. So Ruth only appeared in 98 games for that season, and he hit 25 homers despite this. Now, in 1926, expectations were lowered for the ailing Yankees and Ruth. However, he and the team came to life as they would go on to win the American League. Ruth hit 47 home runs while also leading the league in walks, RBIs, and runs. Ruth hit three homers in Game 4 of that World Series, but the Yankees were shocked in the series 4-3 to by the Cardinals. So the 1927 season started off and the Yankees just dominated. Ruth was a major part in this. He hit a major league record 60 homers as the Yankees cruised to an AL pennant. This team swept the Pirates in the World Series. Now the 1927 Yankees would go down as one of, if not the greatest team in MLB history. In 1928, the Yankees had another stellar year led by Ruth, who hit 54 homers. The Yankees would easily repeat as champions. This time, they swept the Cardinals in the World Series. Now, prior to 1929, it was announced that the Yankees would wear numbers on their back of their uniforms to help fans identify which player is which. Ruth, who batted third in the lineup, was given number three. Ruth had another nice year as he would hit 46 homers. Alas, the Yankees finished a distant second in the American League. During the offseason, Ruth attempted to jockey for the position of player manager, but the Yankees never really considered him a real candidate for the job. This upset Ruth and ended up leading to tense contract negotiations with the team as he felt that he had been backstabbed by management. At, this, at one point, Ruth was asked why he thought he was worth more than the President of the United States as he was arguing that he deserved more money than the salary that the President made. Ruth responded, quote, Say, if I hadn't been sick last summer, I'd have broken hell out of the home run record. Besides, the president gets a four-year contract. I'm only asking for three, end quote. The two parties did end up agreeing on a two-year deal. Now, Ruth had another strong season in 1930, as he would hit 49 home runs, although the Yankees finished a distant third in the American League. In 1931, Ruth added 46 home runs to his record to his career record. This would be the last time he would lead the league in homers. The following season, 1932, saw Ruth still play well. He hit 41 homers while drawing a career high, or league high, 130 walks. The Yankees would win the AL pennant once more, which set them up for a World Series against the Chicago Cubs. Now the Yankees won games one and two, and the team was met with a harsh reaction prior to game three when they arrived in Chicago. Fans booed and heckled the Yankees from the moment their train pulled into the station. They made sure that Ruth knew he was hated the most. They actually threw lemons at him during Game 3. With that game tied at 4 apiece, Ruth stepped into the batter's box in the top of the ninth inning. With the count at 2-2, two two, Ruth pointed with his hand towards center field. He proceeded to crush a homer to center, with the ball itself traveling just under 500 feet. This moment became known as Babe Ruth's called shot. Now, there is much controversy as to whether Ruth actually called the shot or if he was pointing at a Cubs player who was heckling him or some fans or the pitcher. 
Unfortunately, we will never know the truth. The Yankees won that game and clinched the World Series the following day. This would be the last time Ruth played in the World Series. Ruth had a productive 1933 season in which he hit 34 homers, while leading the league once more with 114 walks. He was selected to play in the league's first ever All-Star game, and proceeded to hit the first homer in the All-Star game's history. Ruth also pitched a complete game in the season finale of the 1933 season, in which he allowed 12 hits and 5 earned runs. Still, the Yankees won that game. Ruth had a bad by his standards season in 1934, as his age and lifestyle finally caught up to him. He hit 22 home runs and drew 104 walks, but it was clear that his playing days were nearing an end. After the 1934 season came to an end, Ruth made it clear that he wanted to be manager of the Yankees. He allegedly threatened to retire if he was not named a manager. The Yankees were very concerned about Ruth's habits of drinking, and they decided that it was far from ideal to name him manager. Many other teams thought about making Ruth the manager, including the Cincinnati Reds, Detroit Tigers, and the Philadelphia Athletics, but they all backed away for the same reason. On February 26, 1935, Ruth was traded to the Boston Braves. He was set to serve as a part-time player and assistant manager. Now, the Braves left the option of him becoming manager in 1936 open. While the season started off decently, Ruth's lack of conditioning led to horrible defense. He was not used much. To make matters worse, Ruth's opinions and concerns were often ignored by the Braves manager. So he was just upset. He's like, what is my real role as assistant manager if you're just ignoring me? Due to his performance, Ruth would retire on June 2nd, 1936. He struggled that year, hitting 181 with six homers. Ruth was inducted into Cooperstown, the Cooperstown Hall of Fame's inaugural class in 1936. Ruth had some amazing career statistics. He he currently owns the major league record in career slugging percentage with a .690, OPS with a 1.164, and OPS Plus with a 206 OPS Plus. He managed... 2,873 hits, a then major league record 714 home runs, 2,174 runs, 2,214 RBIs, 2,062 walks, 1,330 strikeouts, and 123 stolen bases. As a pitcher, he had a combined record of 94 and 46 with a 2.28 earned run average and 107 complete games. He was a two-time All-Star, keeping in mind that he made two All-Star games because the All-Star game was created when he was at the tail end of his career. He was a seven-time World Series champ, a one-time AL MVP, a one-time AL batting champ, 12-time AL home run leader, six-time AL RBI leader, one-time AL ERA leader. So he was also saw his number three retired by the Yankees, and he is a Monument Park honoree. He is also in the Red Sox Hall of Fame, and is a member of both the MLB All-Time and All-Century teams. Now, after his retirement from playing, Ruth only had one job in baseball. In 1938, he served as the Brooklyn Dodgers' first base coach. He tried to get a job as a radio broadcaster, but he received no offers. He appealed one last time in 1946 for any job with the Yankees, but they rejected him. In November of 1946, Ruth went to the hospital after dealing with severe pain over his left eye and he was experiencing some difficulty swallowing. The test revealed that he had an inoperable tumor at the base of his skull. The final years of Ruth's life were unfortunately difficult, as he lost a lot of weight, could barely speak, and had difficulty walking. He spent a lot of time in the hospital. On August 16, 1934, Ruth passed away in his sleep. He was 53 years old. Ruth's impact was felt all across the United States, He was one of the best players in baseball and had the personality to support it. In fact, he more than adored the public's attention. He was a shining star during baseball's darkest days as he helped give the sport a shot in the arm after the news of the Black Sox scandal breaking out. He also helped to occupy the minds of Americans everywhere as they dealt with the hardships of World War I and the Great Depression. In fact, the Japanese knew this when we got into World War II. And as a result, Japanese soldiers would attempt to anger Americans by shouting to hell with Babe Ruth. Now, this showed the impact that Ruth had in American life. 
In 2018, Ruth was posthumously awarded the medal, the Presidential Medal of Freedom due to his impact to American life. The life of Babe Ruth started off rough as he struggled to behave himself. After being sent to St. Mary's School for Boys, he was drawn to baseball. Baseball proved to be Ruth's biggest talent as he was a great pitcher, but an even better hitter. He signed a minor league deal with the minor league Baltimore Orioles and was soon shipped to the Boston Red Sox. In Boston, he blossomed into a star pitcher and helped the team contribu- contributed to help the team win three home runs. Towards the end of his time in Boston, he wanted to hit more. As a result, in late 1919, he was traded to the New York Yankees. He became a force in New York and helped slug the Yankees to four World Series titles. Unfortunately, Ruth was never given the opportunity to manage a ball club, but he was one of five members inducted into the first Hall of Fame. Now, Ruth's impact is still felt throughout this day in the United States of America, more than 70 years after his death. Even if you're not a baseball fan, you know the name of Babe Ruth. Anyway, I know that was a longer player bio. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Babe Ruth was definitely one of the names that the moment this series came out, I knew I wanted to discuss. So Babe Ruth is a great player. He's probably, like I said in the beginning, he's arguably the best player of all time. Um, I wouldn't consider him to be the greatest of all time. When we, when I release that player bio, I'll let you know who my, I think the greatest of all time is. But Babe Ruth is just one of the guys. He definitely changed the sport of baseball. Without him, you have to wonder if we would have had a lot of homers. You have to wonder how the home run looks would be if we didn't have Babe Ruth. He obviously was crucial in the Yankees winning four World Series and helped to spark their dynasty. So, again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is Eric. Have a good rest of your day.